good morning on this Christmas Eve. You're listening to a live broadcast from Luther Memorial Church in Pierre. Luther Memorial is located at the corner of Nicollet and Prospect, just west of the state capitol. The ministers at Luther Memorial are Senior Pastor Craig Wexler and Deacon Chris Wollman. Special music will be provided today by Lori Arden and Claire Kennecke, Stacy Smith, Lisa Stanley, and Deacon Chris. Today's organist is Lori Kennecke. Hymn numbers today are 270, 300, 296, 281, and 267. Our service is about to begin, and our first hymn is Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 270, in the ELW Red Hymnal. Christmas. Oh, what a song that is. Welcome to worship, two o'clock Christmas Eve, all of you in person and all of you watching and listening via our website. All are welcome in sanctuaries everywhere. If you are worshiping at home, just a reminder to get some candles ready to go. When we sing Silent Night, we'll be lighting candles here in house, and then you're able to light candles at home. Let us begin worship with these centering words. In winter's deepest night, we welcome the light of the Christ child. Isaiah declares that the light of the long promised king will illumine the world and bring endless peace and justice. Paul reminds us that the grace of God through Jesus Christ brings salvation to all people. The angels declare that Jesus' birth is good and joyful news for everyone, including those lowly shepherds. Filled with the light that shines in our lives, we go forth to share the light of Christ with the whole world. And together we say, Amen. I invite those who are able to please rise as we come together beginning service as we do as always confessing our sins and reading forgiveness blessed be the holy trinity one god who sends the word with angels who has made flesh among all peoples and who breathes peace on all the earth amen in christ we are bold to name our sin and cry out for peace let us begin with a moment of silence to reflect Holy God, we confess our sin before you. We replace compassion with competition. We seek what is mighty while ignoring the meek. We are quick to anger, but slow to forgive. We have not put on love and harmony with you. Wrap us in the grace of your powerful word. Swaddle our hearts with your peace, that all we do in word or deed may reflect your love born among us. Amen. I bring you good news of great joy for all people. God has come among us in the child born of Mary, Christ the Lord. 
In Christ, your sins are forgiven, and you are clothed in peace. Amen. Our opening hymn is Hark the Herald Angels Sing. For those of you that like to use your hymnals, the Red Book's in the pew, number 270. Let us join together in our Christmas prayer this day as it is on the screen. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. May we walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
I invite any of the kids to come down forward this, uh, this afternoon. And as the kids come forward, I invite the congregation to join uh, Lori and I in singing the first verse of Away in a Manger. Christmas. Oh, let's try that again. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, you guys. Do you know what, uh, what, what is tonight? What is special about tonight? It's the night before Christmas. It's Christmas Eve. Yes, Jesus is born, right? He is born. And do you remember which town he's born in? Bethlehem. Yes, he's, he's born to his mama. Yep, exactly, exactly. Do you know what? I learned a fun fact this week. Do you know what Bethlehem means? It means the town of bread. It means the town of bread. Do you want to live in the town of bread? Yes. How many of you like bread? I like bread, right? Like, uh, do any of you, do your parents or grandparents ever make homemade bread? It smells good, right? That's good. But do you, know, do you know what another name that we call Jesus? Bread of life. Bread of life. Isn't it interesting that the town where Jesus is going to be born is called the town of bread, but he is going to grow up, and we're going to call him the bread of life. Do you know what that means? No. No. <laughs> good. That is a great seminary answer. No, I have no idea why we would call Jesus the bread of life. Well, what do you, what do we call, what, or what, do we, what happens when we get hungry? Our, our tummies growl, right? And when our tummies growl, we need to eat, right? And sometimes we eat bread, right? Yeah. But do you know, do you know what else happened on Christmas night? Don't worry, I'm going to connect the dots here. On Christmas night, there's also some guys out on a hillside, and they're watching little sheep. Do you guys, do you remember what those guys are called? Shepherds, right? Right? Now, fun fact, do you know what pastor, the word pastor, what's my, what, what do we call me? I'm past, Pastor Craig, right? Do you know what the word pastor means? It means shepherd. Yeah. It means shepherd because in the old language, it is my job to take the sheep out to the field to feed them. Now, what would I feed you guys? Food, right? <laughs> I, oh, 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 oh. I would feed you the body of Christ. That is a good seminary answer, yes? If I had star stickers, I'd give you one, but unfortunately I don't. I, feed, I would feed you food, right? Maybe we feed you bread, right? Jesus is going to give people, uh, he's going he's gonna to feed them, but what is he going to feed them with? God's Word. God's word, God's bread, right? He's going to do that. And in a little bit here, you're going to hear our word. Deacon Chris is going to read our word, you know, read from the Bible, our Christmas story. And I get to preach it. And tonight, tonight, I imagine you are going to go home and you are going to eat. Are you going to eat some good food? And tomorrow, maybe even some really good food, right? But tonight is Christmas Eve, right? So tonight, tonight we're going to pray. And we're going to pray for the bread of life. Will you guys pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for coming to this world, to coming to the town of bread. And you are the bread of life. And you will feed us with your love. And you will teach us how to love others. And all of God's children said, Amen. Oh, can you guys say it even louder? Amen. Even louder. Amen. 
Thank you guys. Will you stand up with me? Last time I did this, I fell over. Look at that, great success. I did not fall this time. Will you guys face the crowd? Put your hands up in the air and repeat after me. The peace of the Lord, peace of the Lord. be with you. Always. Always. And you guys respond? Always. Well, thank you, kids. You head back to your seat as we continue in our service this afternoon. Our first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. As people exult when dividing plunder for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders and the rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day of Midian for all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire for a child has been born for us a son given to us authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named wonderful counselor Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our second reading is from Titus chapter 2. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Our scripture hymn is the first Noel in sanctuaries everywhere. Let's sing together 300 in your red hymnal, verses 1 and 2. As you are able, please stand.
Our gospel tonight on this Christmas Eve comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governed of, a governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember my internship year, I was all excited because, you know, as an intern pastor, you don't preach Christmas. <laughs> you don't preach Easter. But you have all these ideas bouncing around your head of what you're going to do when you finally get to preach your first Christmas sermon. And then Christmas comes, your very first year, and you scratch your head and you're like, wow, what then do we say? After 11 years, looking at the cursor blinking on the computer the other day, I thought to myself, what shall we say? Wow. And here we are. Amen? Amen. Amen. My older, wiser colleagues would always say, just tell them the story. For me, I find the story starting with one of the songs that we were singing on Wednesday night, one of our last Wednesday night worship services, What Child Is This? What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who named, who's, whom angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch are keeping. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Well, maybe where we begin is what Christmas is not. Last week, when I was sitting there on uh, Tuesday morning with, uh, with the guys that joined me down at Perkins, and we're reading through our text, I said, guys, what is Christmas for you guys? And one of the gentlemen said, well, Pastor, I, I do know one thing's for sure. Christmas is not in the container ships floating off the coast. Amen? And I know some of us, I guarantee, some of us woke up this morning, grabbed our phones, opened up our emails, clicked on those little tracking numbers, wondering where some of the things still might be. Amen? And I can tell by the smiles and laughter exactly which one of yous, uh, which one of yous, which one of yous it was. It was. I confess I did the same thing. But Christmas is not floating in the container ships. Fun fact, I also found out this past week that Charmin is officially a dollar a roll. Christmas is not to the consequences of inflation, and if you're sitting there counting the squares on your Charmin toilet paper, don't even go there. Christmas is also not doing math about how much the toilet paper costs. Amen. Amen. 
I will say that well, there was a glimpse for us in the Wexler household a month ago when we started decorating the house, putting the tree up, putting the garland, the garland up, wrapping the lights. Um, I'm allergic to everything pine and spruce, which is always fun to wrap lights in real pine and spruce. And so in that moment though, we decorated and I thought to myself, something is missing this year. So I looked at my daughters and I said, girls, let's get in the car, let's go to Menards. And we went up to Menards and we're walking around and I couldn't decide exactly what was missing. And Ellie and Maddie, they said, Daddy, do you see those inflatables? <laughs> up until 2021, no offense, I hated inflatables. On this particular day, I looked at them and they looked at me and I said, let's do it, girls. So we got a Santa. A 12-foot Santa. <laughs> and not just one snowman, we got two 8-foot snowmen to go with the 12-foot Santa. To which we put them up in our yard, and my wife comes out. Do we have any National Lampoons fans in here? A few? My wife comes out, and she goes, you guys look like you're the jolliest bunch of on this side of the North Pole. And I did just G-rate that quote. But the other night, we, I, we in our house, so we had a tough week uh, a week ago, and on that particular night, my oldest, uh, Ellie and I, we went for a walk. We took the dog for a walk, and every time that I wanted to turn, because I, it was a cold night, uh, she said, Daddy, let's go another block. Look at the lights up there. And so we wound up going the longest walk we'd probably been in a very long time, and our dog, Sergeant Pepper, the old English bulldog, was with us every step of the way. We got back, and Ellie was just giving me the gospel. Believe it or not, the 10-year-old pastor's child can give the Christmas story in a better way than I ever could. She's not here. She's going to the bonfire tonight, but if she were here, she'd gladly get up here and give you the Christmas story. But she did it for me on that walk, and when we got back, I found myself staring up at the 12-foot Santa as he stared back at me, and I thought to myself, this is not Christmas. And I looked down, and my dog, Sergeant Pepper, lifted his leg and peed on Santa. <laughs> The gospel according to Sergeant Pepper, amen? <laughs> amen. What Christmas was, was a night that was difficult. It was a night for Mary, it was a night for Joseph. It was something that we've read about, we've heard every single year that we've graced ourselves in the pews. And maybe for some of us, this might be the very first time we've ever been in a church pew for Christmas. But I have a good sneaking suspicion we've at least heard semblances of the, of the story. But something that was something unique that we really don't think of is in this time, as, as our story opens up, governor, uh, the, the governor of the Roman, the Holy Roman Empire, he declares that they are going to take a census. So not only are they supposed to go to their hometown, no way in God's way, shape, or form was Bethlehem ready for hundreds of thousands of people to be there, that, there over that week. Because there was no census before that. But now, everyone that has lineage to Bethlehem, everyone that has lineage to Jerusalem, everyone that has lineage to Nazareth is required under law to show up. They're required to show up, to put their name on paper, to pay their tax, to, to render taxes where taxes are due. And if they didn't, they were also conscripted into the Roman army, army no questions asked. So for Mary and Joseph... It wasn't just like they were going on vacation to go visit the in-laws for Christmas, amen? They were going to do it because there was fear and anxiety and everything with it. And in the midst of it, Mary was nine months pregnant. And that moment comes where she looks down and she says, what child is this? Why lies he in such mean a state where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian fear for sinners here. The silent word is pleading. Nails, spear shall pierce him through. The cross be born for me, for you. Hail, hail, the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. Which leads us to the next question of Christmas. Why God, why in this way is this going to transpire? Because God chooses to correct the system. 
God chooses to correct the system, and I, I find myself thinking of all the times in my childhood where sometimes we take on tasks. Parents, uh, parents in the room, raise your hand. There, okay, there's kids here, therefore there are parents here. Parents, raise your hand. <laughs> The parents in the room, we have moments in our life where we just trust our daughters and our sons to do something, to give them an opportunity to learn, to grow. It's called chores, it's called tasks, it's called life. And there are times in which, try as they may, they do a great job, but in the back of our minds, we think to ourselves, I think I'm just gonna do that myself. In fact, I know that's why my father was fired from laundry years ago. I remember sitting in the living room, we were watching a Christmas movie, none, nonetheless. And all of a sudden I heard my mom say, Tom, get down here right now. And he did, and uh, he came back up smiling. And I said, what happened, Dad? He goes, oh, I accidentally shrunk Mom's sweater. And I said a little extra emphasis on accidentally, and he just smiled. She came up and she said, you know what, I think I'm just going to do this myself from now on. I looked at my dad, and he goes, I said, well played, dad, and he goes, you'll learn. But laughing and jokes aside, I do find myself thinking that as God creates, he brings us into this world, he creates all things into being, he creates man and woman, he calls us his pride, his, his pride possession, his greatest creation, and each and every step of the way, we seem to screw it up over and over again. We try to love, we try to care, we try to do what's right, and deep down inside, whether we like it or not, we sin, tend to look inward on ourselves over and over again, and on the best of days, we justify it. On the best of days, we find ourselves righteous, and each and every step of the way, we stumble and we mess up, amen? And God, in his absolute vulnerable step, the most vulnerable moment that I think God ever took upon himself, is he gave us the choice of free will. And again, try as we may, we just stumble over ourselves over and over again. And so on this night, over 2,000 years ago, on this night, God decides, with a shrunken sweater in hand, I think it's time I do it myself. And he comes to this world. He comes to this world in the most small, infant, innocent package. And it's in that moment that God chooses to take on flesh so that this Christmas story can have a meaning that we will never fully understand until we, go, until we watch that innocence grow up in stature and wisdom and in leadership. Which also brings us to the third verse. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh. Come, peasant king, to own him. The king of kings, salvation brings. Let loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise the song on high. The virgin sings her lullaby. Joy, joy, for Christ is born. The babe, the son of Mary. At the very beginning of Advent, my first sermon in Advent, it actually kicked off Advent. It was Christ the King Sunday. I had Laura post up a picture of a crusader knight in shining armor on the screen. And we found ourselves talking about what it meant to be a king. And as we stare at that image, everything that Christ the King is, is not that image. The most beautiful thing I ever read this fall was this image of what it truly means to be a king and what Christ does that sets himself apart from all the human kings of earth. Kings were phenomenal at staying behind their fortress, staying behind the walls, decreeing laws and regulations and taxes and everything ha everyone having to grovel. And if the king ever, ever left their kingdom, you were required by law to bow on bended knee. But not Christ. Instead, the image that came to mind was a king who decides to open up the gate and to walk out in the pathway dressed like every one of us. And he did it. He walked out to dress like every one of us, and he came along the pathway to the homeless man. And he sat down next to him. 
And he picked, up, he picked up that beggar's cup and he learned what it was like. And after sitting with the homeless man for a while, he got up and that king walks on down the path and he comes along the young child who is sick and starving. He doesn't heal the child, but he walks with her. He learns from her. He learns from those moms and dads that are grieving in the waiting room of the hospital, in the waiting room of Mayo Clinic, waiting to find out what's going to happen next. And as he leaves that hospital, he goes on further down the pathway and he decides to stop down at the courthouse. And he sits there and he, he watches the innocent and he watches the guilty and he watches the system unfold around him so that he continues to learn exactly what it's like to be like each and every one of us. And he leaves that courthouse and he goes down to the market and he punches in and he punches out. And he's going to go back to that fortress. He's going to walk behind those walls. The gate is going to shut. But one thing's certain, that king knows every one of us. Because baby in a flesh grows up to be just like every one of us. I want to close with this final quote. My wife sent this to me about a week ago. She gets all these really awesome memes. I don't even really know what a meme is other than it's a thing called a meme, amen? It's a picture with words put together it makes you think. And this one made me think. I will not take credit for it. It's a guy named Dustin Benji. Whoever Dustin Benji is, this is the gospel according to Dustin Benji. These are the thoughts that we leave with ourselves on Christmas Eve. He says this, Despite how warm and fuzzy you will make Christmas, it is absolutely inseparably linked to Good Friday and Easter. The baby born tonight is the man who dies on a cross. The baby crying tonight is the one who cries, it is finished. The baby sleeping is the one who will awaken and rise from the dead. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we will leave this space in a handful of minutes. We will go off to a meal. We will say Merry Christmas with smiles. And God willing, we will snuggle into bed tonight to fall asleep. Amen? But when we wake in the morning, it is God's greatest gift that we too get to awaken because that infant child came into this world for each and every one of us. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite those who are able to rise. And we will sing our song tonight that I was quoting all throughout the sermon, What Child Is This? Number 296. Number 296. Word is pleading. Nail 
We declare the mystery of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. God, our great and abundant God, gives us what we need. And some days we have more than we need than others. And we know there are those who do not have enough, even with an abundant God. So God nudges us to share what we have been given and to return. So here is a prayer for the offering and all the gifts that we use, time, talent, and treasure for the work of God. Gracious God, your word made flesh brings harmony to the earth. We offer ourselves and these your gifts. Renew us the song of your salvation in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Love proclaims that a Savior has been born to us. Inspire your church throughout the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus' birth to all who seek salvation, hope, and a new life. Love whispers to a weary world that the time for rest and restoration has come. Maintain healthy cycles of wake and sleep for all creatures where light pollution disrupts natural rhythms, encourage new practices. Love cries to a warring world that the time for peace is at hand. Direct those in power who make decisions on behalf of others, that they nurture and sustain all that is healthy, good, and holy. Love sings through the wails of a newborn baby. What? child is this. Respond to all who cry out in pain and despair or need this day. Bring comfort to those for whom separation, grief, or loss makes the Christmas season especially difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Love murmurs words of comfort to a newborn child and exhausted parents. Bless new and expected parents or caregivers, especially those who are alone or afraid this night. Pour out your love upon families of every kind, of every description. 
rejoicing in your word made flesh among us. We offer these prayers to you, confident of your grace and love made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior. And together we say, Amen. I invite all who are able to please stand. We pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have, we have beheld, beheld Christ's Christ glory. glory. Glory is of the, the only Son from the Father. For to us a child is born. To us, to us the Son, son is given. given. In the him was life, life and, and the life was the light, light of all people. We are going to, uh, Deacon Chris and I are going to light our candles. I will head up one aisle, she will head up the other. Those on the end, take the unlit candle and dip it into the lit and then pass that on down the rows.
The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh. Amen. You may extinguish your candles as you head on out. They are baskets that you can place them in. We close with our sending hymn, Joy to the World, number 267 in a red hymnals. Joy to the World. peace 
rejoice in Christ our Savior. Thanks be to God.